This is NHK World, Radio Japan, broadcasting from Tokyo. We are now commencing our English broadcast. Our English language programs go on air six times a day. For details of the schedule, please visit our website at www.nhk.or.jp slash NHK World. Please stay tuned. It's just after 7 p.m. Japan time on Friday, January 4th. We bring you the news from Tokyo. I'm Mark Robinson. And I'm Hiroko Kitadai. In our top stories, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe at his New Year's news conference has reiterated his government's mission to restore a strong economy. Traders found stock prices soaring in Tokyo on Friday, the first trading day of the year. And Japan has lodged a protest with South Korea for its failure to extradite a Chinese man accused of setting fire to the war-related Yasukuni Shrine in Tokyo. Now the news in detail. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has reiterated his government's resolve to restore a strong economy. He told a New Year's news conference the government plans to decide on a fiscal 2013 budget by the end of January. Japan's fiscal year starts in April. Abe led his Liberal Democratic Party to a landslide election victory last month. He launched his government last week. He said his administration will quickly draft the budget by cutting wasteful spending that ballooned under the previous Democratic Party-led government. He said he will focus resources on priority areas. Abe also mentioned a plan to compile emergency economic measures and submit a large-scale supplementary budget to the Diet for quick enactment. The Prime Minister said he will establish a task force to quickly devise measures for the supplementary budget. He said he hopes the additional measures, together with the full national budget for the next fiscal year, will enable a seamless continuation of spending over the next 15 months. The Prime Minister said that to restore a strong economy, the two budgets should be implemented together. He indicated the Bank of Japan should be involved by adopting bold monetary policies in close coordination with his government. Abe said the central bank's monetary policy is critically important in terms of foreign exchange rates and in achieving a 2% inflation target. He said he expects the BOJ to act responsibly. On the planned rise in the consumption tax early next year, Abe said he will take a comprehensive look at key economic data from April to June and overall economic conditions. He said he would then determine whether the tax can be raised as planned. On the issue of nuclear energy, Abe confirmed expectations that his administration will reverse the previous government's stance toward abolishing nuclear power generation. He suggested he may allow the construction of new plants. But he said his government will make decisions in line with its policy of reducing dependence on nuclear energy. He added the government will monitor risks Japan could face in securing global supplies of fossil fuels. He said his government will also examine the situation surrounding the Fukushima nuclear disaster and check progress in nuclear safety technology. He said it will take time to decide whether new nuclear plants can be constructed. On diplomacy, Abe said he will give top priority to restoring a strong Japan-U.S. alliance. He said he hopes to visit the United States soon for a summit with President Barack Obama. He said his aim is to demonstrate globally the revival of strong ties between the two allies. Abe said Japanese and U.S. officials are flexibly studying the timing of his visit. He pointed out the U.S. government is busy with upcoming key events including President Barack Obama's inauguration for his second term. Traders found stock prices soaring in Tokyo on Friday, the first trading day of the year. 
Financial markets in Japan were closed until then for New Year holidays. The key Nikkei 225 stock average at one point climbed above 10,700, a 22 month high. The Nikkei index ended the day's trading at 10,688, up 292 points from the previous session on December 28th. That was also a 22 month closing high. The broader topics index of all first section issues on the Tokyo Stock Exchange rose 28 points to 888. Market dealers say share prices jumped after the U.S. Congress passed a bill to avoid the fiscal cliff, easing worries about the nation's economy. The dealers also pointed to a bull market with buy orders flooding in for stocks of exporter companies. They say buyers are motivated by the yen's decline against the dollar. Japan has lodged a protest with South Korea for its failure to extradite a Chinese man accused of setting fire to the war related Yaskuni Shrine in Tokyo. The suspect completed a 10 month prison term in November for an attack on the Japanese embassy in South Korea. Vice Foreign Minister Ch- Chikao Kawai tol- called the South Korean ambassador to Japan, Shin Kak Su, on Friday. Kawai said it's regrettable that a South Korean court struck down the extradition request, even though there were no grounds for a denial. Shin replied that the court in Seoul determined that the Chinese man saw the shrine not as a religious facility, but as a political symbol that justifies Japan's war of invasion. The 38 year old Chinese suspect, Liu Chiang, was re- repatriated to Shanghai on Friday, one day after the Seoul High Court delivered the ruling. He served a prison term in South Korea for throwing Molotov cocktails at the Japanese embassy in Seoul in January last year. The arson attack on Yaskuni Shrine was carried out in December 2011. The shrine is dedicated to the war dead, including Japanese leaders convicted of war crimes after World War II. China has welcomed the suspect's return. Japan has no extradition treaty with the country. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said South Korea's decision to send the Chinese suspect back home disregards the extradition treaty between Japan and South Korea. He said Japan strongly protests the move. You are listening to NHK World Radio Japan in Tokyo. Republican John Boehner won re election as Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives as the new Congress opened on Thursday. The opposition congressman retained his post in the Republican controlled chamber, but more than 10 members of his own party did not vote for him. In his acceptance speech, Boehner said the U.S. government has built up too much debt and the American dream is in peril so long as its namesake is weighed down by the anchor of debt. Boehner's leadership was thrown into doubt during the recent wrangling over legislation designed to avert the so called fiscal cliff of substantial tax increases and deep spending cuts. Despite an agreement with the ruling Democrats, about two thirds of Republican House members opposed the bill. Congress is facing another thorny issue of raising the debt ceiling, the limit of how much the federal government can borrow. It needs to reach a deal by the end of next month. Many Republicans strongly believe that deep spending cuts, including reductions in Social Security expenditure, will be indispensable for an agreement to raise the limit. Boehner is expected to lead the Republicans through yet another round of bitter confrontation with the Democrats over this issue. There are concerns that the debate may create further confusion. Egypt is expected to hold a parliamentary election next month. Egypt's state run news agency, MENA, on Thursday cited Prime Minister Hisham Kondil as saying that a draft parliamentary election law will be finalized within 15 days and submitted to the Supreme Constitutional Court for review. No date has been set, but the election must be held within two months after the approval of the draft constitution. The Election Commission announced on December 25th that the draft constitution had been approved in a referendum. Opposition and secular groups criticized the draft constitution as favoring Islamists and clashed with Islamist supporters of President Mohamed Morsi. The coming parliamentary election will mark the end of the transitional period since former President Hosni Mubarak stepped down in February 